Aptasia's an annoying anemone. It stings your coral, it breeds like a bunny, and it never seems to go away. We're gonna teach you three techniques to eliminate Aptasia once and for all. What is Aptasia? It's a genus of sea anemones found in warm waters. Just like other species of anemones, they are photosynthetic, but unlike other anemones, Aptasia seem able to thrive and multiply in a wide range of environments. So much so, actually, that we classify them as a pest in the saltwater aquarium hobby. But where Aptasia really become a pest to us in this hobby is when they sidle up next to your corals and cause them to retract because over time that can kill your coral. And on top of that, Aptasia babies are super tiny so you're not able to see everything that comes in on your frags or on live rock. So that leads us to eradication technique number one, livestock. If your Aptasia problem is already quite large, then you're probably gonna wanna consider adding different types of livestock, fish, and inverts that are known to eat Aptasia. You could first try peppermint shrimp. They're super inexpensive and really easy to find, and they're captive bred a lot of the time. Sometimes they will eat the Aptasia, but other times you will find them eating your frog spawn, your hammers, and your torch corals, which is less than ideal. If you do want to try a peppermint shrimp, be sure to keep your eye on it to make sure it's not going after your corals, and a great way to prevent that is to keep it well fed with meaty foods. It's also really important to note that there are several peppermint shrimp lookalikes, some of which will not touch your Aptasia. So be sure when you're buying a peppermint shrimp that it is an Aptasia eating species such as Lismata wordmani and Lismata bogesi. And I'm super sorry if I butchered the pronunciations. <laughs> Filefish are another great option and there are several different species available, but the bristletail filefish is known for eating Aptasia. It's also cool because they stay quite small, so you could really put them in a tank 30 gallons or higher. On top of all of that, bristletail filefish are also captive bred, which means they're usually disease free, they already eat prepared foods, and we're not pulling them from the reef. Just like peppermint shrimp, they can go after your corals, so be sure to keep them well fed, and it usually takes a couple weeks for them to settle in before they'll go after the Aptasia. Another fish option that will eat Aptasia is the copper band butterfly fish. But unless you are an expert, and I don't mean like sort of an expert, but I mean a real deal expert who knows a ton about copper band butterflies and how to care for them, do not buy this fish. It's a super picky eater, it does not ship or acclimate well, and it can oftentimes get bullied by other fish. And the fourth and final livestock option is by far the most effective, and it's probably not the ideal option for most tanks. We are, of course, talking about the Bergia or Bergia nudibranch. Super cool looking sea slugs, Bergia nudibranchs are so effective because the only thing they eat are Aptasia. But that means once they eat all of your Aptasia, they will slowly starve to death. So they are not ideal for most of us who only have a few Aptasia to take care of. One really cool things about Bergia nudibranchs is they will lay eggs in your tank and their tiny microscopic babies will be able to get into all those nooks and crannies and kill those really small baby Aptasia. Bergia nudibranchs are fantastic for large systems with a ton of Aptasia, but if you have a small system and want to give it a shot, go ahead, but once your Aptasia is gone, you're going to want to give the nudibranch away to another hobbyist who has Aptasia in their tank. And a huge thanks to Devin at Reef Dudes for all of this great footage on Bergia and Nudibranchs. If you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, check it out now. He is a fantastic reefer who puts out some amazing content. We will link it below. Moving on to technique number two for killing Aptasia, F Aptasia. F Aptasia or Frank's Aptasia is a reef safe product that you apply directly to the mouth of the anemone. It's somewhat sticky and smothers the anemone before it has a chance to throw out any larva. F. Aptasia won't mess with your water chemistry, but it will kill other corals if you happen to get it in their polyps. Frank's Aptasia is really quite thick and needs to be vigorously and rather violently shaken and stirred before each use. And if it does dry out a little bit, you can always add some RODI water into the mix. If Aptasia is super easy to use and just start by turning off your return pump and wave maker. Shake and stir F. Aptasia, then draw it into a syringe using either one of the two included metal tips. Apply F. Aptasia directly to the anemone. It will retract, but just make sure it's completely covered. 
Wait about 30 minutes, then turn the pumps back on. F. Aptasia creates a shell over the anemone, and since the product is caustic, it kills the Aptasia. A few days after applying F. Aptasia, you can just brush it away and the anemone will be gone. This technique works really well for any Aptasia that grows from the bottom to the top of your tank. But what do you do if the anemone grows sideways or perches underneath a rock and grows down? Well, that brings us to technique number three, Tunza Coral Gum combined with F. Aptasia. In this method, we are still using the F. Aptasia to actually kill the anemone, but we're using the coral putty to secure the F. Aptasia in place. Just like before, turn off your pumps and mix together a small amount of coral putty. Then flatten out the coral putty and place a generous amount of F. Aptasia in the center. Slowly and carefully cover the anemone, being sure to secure the edges of the epoxy around the Aptasia. Give it a few days, then remove the putty and the Aptasia will be gone. Click here to solve all sorts of problems from cyanobacteria and hair algae to poor skimmer performance and cloudy water. And as always, everybody, thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.